In this video, I want to talk a little bit about feedback loops with input and output points, a little bit of logic, and a controller. Again, this is an introductory video. It's not going to go into depth on how to program, but we have to get the general idea of what's going on before we can talk about programming either PLCs or building control systems. So first of all, what is a feedback loop? It's a logical decision-making process. Okay, It uses input points, it uses output points, and it uses logic in a controller to make decisions based on those inputs and it causes the output to do something. It's very simple. It's a decision-making process. Okay, in the old days we used to use flow charts to represent all of this, but it's a decision-making process. If you have not watched the video on introduction to logic yet, I hope you do so. So the input points, it collects information and it transmits it to a controller. The input points can be analog, the input points can be digital. There's a difference between the two. Analog inputs allow a varying range of input signals. For example, a thermostat needs to sense a range of temperatures and send that range to the controller to decide what the output will be. For this to work, the input temperature also needs to be converted to a signal that the controller will understand. Most analog input sensors use voltage, resistance, or current to transmit the information. The voltage, resistance, or current will vary depending on the device, the use, and the system. A basic example of an analog input would be a digital input sen temperature sensor. It has a resistance of 2 through 2500 ohms. It senses the temperature from 65 through 75 degrees. If the room temperature is 65 degrees, the sensor's temperature resistance is 2 ohms. If the room temperature is 75 degrees, the sensor's resistance is 2500 ohms. Each degree between these two min and max temperatures is roughly 248 ohms. The controller senses this resistance and decides what action to take. So again, we're dealing with ranges of values. That's what analog sensors. Now, the digital input is a little bit different. It's either open or closed, on or off, true or false, or in machine language, one or zero. There's no scales. It's only on or off. It can only have two values. An example of a digital input would be a pressure switch for proving the airflow. It is either open or closed. It's an airflow proving device. Face it, we either have airflow or we don't. If there's no airflow, the digital sensor would possibly act as an open switch, not allowing current or voltage to pass. If there is airflow, the digital sensor would act as a closed switch. This would allow current or voltage to pass. It's either on or off, open or closed, true or false, one or zero. The controller, we're going to talk much more about controllers, but for now let's just say the controller is the brain of the system. It acts as the computer that's using these inputs, okay, uses logic on them, programming, and sends the output signals to the output devices. There's always a set point. It's a set value that's in the controller. It's any value that uses an analog output to compare against. Okay, In our example of an HVAC system, the set point would be the desired room temperature. But we have to have some basis for the decision-making process to occur. We have to be trying to do something with the system. The first type of output we're going to talk about is the digital output. Digital outputs are either on or off. Digital outputs be current or voltage driven, but it is either all or nothing. Okay, for example, if we're using a 24 volt output device, it is either receiving 24 volts or it's not receiving anything. Digital outputs can also be step driven. In other words, there's a device out there called a step motor. We send an output, we sense where 
we send a digital signal, a blip of five volts, the valve opens to the next position. If it's not open far enough, we send another thing of five volts, the valve opens to another position. But it can be step driven with a step motor. An example of a digital output is easy. Before we move heated or cooled air through the ductwork, we have to turn the blower on. The contactor or relay that energizes the fan motor is a digital output. It's either energized or de-energized. Analog outputs allow a range of current or voltage to drive an object. The range of current or voltage can open or close a valve or damper in increments. In PLC and motor controls, an analog output can be used to move things in a specific distance or percentage of open and closed. So again, we're dealing with percentages. Based on the signal we send the device, we're going to open or close or move something a percentage of the full range of motion. An example of this, again, a room thermometer is set for 70 degrees. The outside temperature is 55 degrees. Based on the outside temperature, if the room temperature drops to 68 degrees, we do not need the full flow of hot water in the air handler coil to heat the room. The analog output would only open the zone valve 50%, thus saving money. In the same situation, if the outdoor temperature is 10, negative 10 degrees, the controller would send the full signal to open the valve 100 degrees because of the increased demand. So if the outdoor air temperature is warmer, the building is losing less heat and we can only go, we can only need 50% of our full potential. So if we take a look at the full feedback or control loop, if we have a set point at 72 degrees, the sensor is resistive 2 through 2500 ohms with a 65 to 75 degree temperature swing and the room temperature is currently 68 degrees. The sensor resistance is reading 496 ohms to the controller. That's because each, each degree between 65 and 75 is about 248 ohms. So, we're so the room temperature is 68 degrees. Okay. The controller has been programmed with the logic if the room temperature if room temp is less than the set point minus one and airflow is true, set the valve output to a hundred percent. Or else is just saying to the next step. If the room temperature is less than the set point minus one and airflow is false, set the fan relay on. Now let's talk about these two steps. Why don't I want to set this? Why don't I want to open the valve if there's no airflow? Well, because I have to have airflow to move the heat around, to actually heat the warm air across the coil. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to oh, turn on the fan. Okay, we're setting the fan relay to on. Okay, if the room temperature, the final line is, if the room temp is, then that should be greater than or equal to set point plus one, and airflow is true, set the valve output to zero percent, and the fan relay is zero. So again, we need to, um, this right here, should be greater than. Okay, so if the room temperature is greater than equal to or equal to the set point plus one. Now why do I use the set point with the minus one or the plus one? It's to create a temperature swing so we're not bouncing the, it's a differential. Okay, we don't want to bounce the thermostat and we don't want to constantly turn this thing on or off just because it's getting up or under the set point. Okay, that's my differential. So we actually have a two degree differential built into this system. Now this loop, once it reaches the end, okay, it will go right back to the start. So here we turned our fan on. Well, within uh, less than 30 seconds, it's going to go and say, okay, my fan is now on, okay, 
Now I can open the valve to the 100%. And then it's going to continue going through this loop until we finally get to the point where the room temperature has warmed up to the set point plus one. Then it's going to come back here. It's going to close the valve. It's going to turn the fan relay off. I could actually do this in two statement as well to give a fan a little bit more time to re get the residual heat off the coil. But again, this is just a simplified version. So all control loops have to have inputs, control and command, and output. And they also have to have some logic that's part of the control and command. 